Good evening, guys and dolls. Hope everybody's having a great evening. I'm back and I'm here to do a second part on the um, death of Lane Stanley, uh, lead uh, vocalist for Alice in Chains. And um, tonight kind of took a little turn. So, um, as I mentioned last night, um, there was a little bit of a rabbit hole that I was going to go down because uh, something kind of piqued my interest. And so I wanted to check into some things. And so here we are. So let's recap a little bit. Uh, Lane Stanley, uh, he died April 5th. 2002. The last person to see him was his bassist for Alice in Chains by the name of Mike Starr. Um, Lane, this is what troubled me the most, and this is what got me is that Lane uh, passed away on April 4th, but his body wasn't found until April 19th. And that was two weeks. But his known to be very close friend, Mike Starr, who had known him for between the years of 1987 to 1992. I mean, very close through those years. Um, had been the last one to be with him. And he went over to his apartment condo and um, spent some time with him and knew that he was doing drugs and um, they got into an argument. And he, here was the argument that they got into. They got into an argument because um, uh, Stan, Stanley was upset that um, Mike was um, on methadone at the time for treatment of um, opioid. Um, use, heroin addiction. He was taking methadone, but then certainly there shortly after found himself addicted to benzodiazepine. Um, and the one that he was most commonly addicted to was Xanax. And that evening of their fight, and I don't know if it was the first night of his death, or if it was a few nights. I, I don't know. That was never made really clear. But um, they got into an argument because uh, Star wanted to go find some benzos. And um, Langley said, um, those pills just make you stupid. And uh, Star was very offended by that and said, um, well, you got a lot of room to talk sitting there with an eight ball in your arm. Which is kind of true. You know, a drug is a drug is a drug is a drug, right? Um, but Mike's defense was, of course, you know, hey, I'm in methadone program. Well, were you? And I'm not saying he wasn't that, you know, but he did obviously have a benzo problem. So that really bothered me. It bothered me that he knew his friend was in such a bad situation in bad states and didn't call 911 didn't, didn't, uh, alert authorities didn't take him to the hospital or anything, just left. And then 
he was in a blackout for two weeks on benzos? What? I've, I don't even know how to respond to that. The reason is, is because if he's taking methadone, he's going to wake up for that methadone every day. And how many benzo or how many Xanax was he taking? to be in a blackout for two weeks and how did he survive that so that did not set well with me that really got me thinking that there's just not something right here so i found myself in a chat room And most of the folks in this chat room felt pretty much the same way I did. Um, they, one guy, one fellow was even said, you know, how, how in the F could you be a friend of Lane's and not know the extent of his addiction and just leave him? And I was thinking the same thing. Um, some commented it was terribly convenient. Fair. I was saying that's awfully convenient of him to have blacked out for two weeks. Wasn't it? That's what I thought. That's awfully convenient. And something else that I didn't know, when the, they finally did break the door down to his condo apartment, there were no drugs other than the eight ball that was in the syringe that wasn't injected into him yet. You know, he had died prior to. There were no drug paraphernalia found. There was no drugs found. Now, I don't know if Lane or if Mike Starr gathered him all up and in order to um, help save his friend. I don't know. Maybe that's what he did to help him. Um, it certainly didn't. But um, I thought that was interesting. There were no drugs there. So someone um, else wrote they were angry over it all that um, Lane was uh, long gone before he actually even ever died or even died. Um, it was just a sim simply a matter of time, you know, really. And, it, and it's from the sounds of it, it kind of was, you know. Um, he, it was very apparent to me, like I said last night, that he never did get over the death of his um, girlfriend, um, uh, Demery Parrot. Um, he never did really recover from that. Went into a depression and just never really come out of it. But, um, yeah, um, Mike Starr would go on to be in um, Celebrity Rehab, the show that I never once watched, ever. So I have no idea what it's about. But um, in 2010, he was on the show, and um, Nancy uh, Staley, uh, Staley's mother, um, got the opportunity to confront him and to say, you know, why, why, why didn't you call somebody? Why didn't you call the 911 or, or call his friends or call somebody for, for help? Why did you just leave him? 
and I didn't see any response from him. I didn't get any reaction. I didn't see any of that. Maybe there was, maybe I missed something, but I didn't see that. And then I, I heard an interview between him and Dr. Drew where he talks about how um, uh, St Staley uh, saved his life over in South, Af South Africa where they were doing a um, tour with um, Kurt Cobain and um, Courtney Love and um, Red Hot Chili Pop with pepper, Peppers and um, Nirvana and um, uh, Mike Starr had um, done some uh, hits of heroin with Courtney Love and Kurt Cobain. And uh, next thing he knows, he's OD'd and uh, Langley has him in the bathtub and he wakes up wet and he says that um, he saved his life that day. So he felt that he really owed him that. And um, that broke my heart. That made me really sad to hear that. So, um, yeah, Star Would Die, March 8th, 2011, at the age of 44 years old. So he finally did. Um, be overtaken with the mixture of uh, methadone and uh, high amounts of benzos, uh, Xanax. And it was about 1.45 in the afternoon uh, in Salt Lake City. His roommate came home and found him. He had been passed away. And, um, yeah. It's just, um, both of these stories are very heartbreaking, very heartbreaking. And, um, I am not in any way, not in any way saying that Mike took part or had anything to do with, um, Staley's, uh, passing. That's not what I'm getting at at all. I'm just saying I went down a rabbit hole because I just thought, hmm. Something don't sound right. Because <laughs> it just didn't. It just didn't. Um, you don't, you don't go into a two-week blackout on benzos. You don't. And you might be asking yourself, how does Holly know so much about drugs? Well, I'll tell you how. Um, I went to college for it. <laughs> um, and uh, studied it and uh, I also have a lot of um, experience in the drug um, field with um, uh, family members and um, such and I'll just I'll leave it at that but um, yes that is how I know so much and I have yet to ever heard anybody being in a two-week blackout from Xanax without killing themselves. I, I've never heard of it. Never. I, I mean, I suppose you, you could take that amount, a large amount, and try, but it would kill you. I don't think you would be in a blackout for two weeks. I don't think you would sleep for two weeks. Especially if your body is tissue dependent on methadone. Mm -mm. No, no, no. That's not how it works, folks. So, I, yeah, I wasn't buying it. But again, I'm not, I'm not saying that Mike had anything to do with Staley's death, either. I'm just saying that it just sounds kind of weird and fishy. 
because he did know. He had a part of him had to have known his friend was in that apartment condo and nobody'd heard from him for two weeks. Why didn't he say something? That's what I'd like to know. So anyways, yeah. So if you like what you're hearing, keep coming back because this is where you're going to hear stories about deaths of tragic stars, tragic singers, songwriters, composers, actors, actresses, because that's what we're going to talk about. That's all we're going to talk about. So if you have something that you want to hear me talk to you about, give me something to talk about. So this is my um, grunge week or whatever you want to call it. Um, I will be doing a few more. So, but uh, yeah, I have a book. I've got a list, folks. So, but I can use more. I don't have them all in my head. So, you guys all have a great night. Thanks for listening. And uh, if you like what you're hearing, subscribe and like, and I'll be back soon. Thank you. Bye.